Welcome, everybody. In 2015, attendance at global parks and attractions was just over 1 billion visitors. In 2025, that's expected to grow to 1.3 billion. Tourism, entertainment is one of the largest industries growing internationally at around 4%. In Saudi Arabia, in f the last five years, that number's grown 56%. Tourist, domestic, international, seek entertainment. And I can sum up the strategy for Saudi Arabia and what you see this week in the Saudi Expo in one word. More. More. My name's Neil Dwyer. I'm the VP of Operations for Six Flags Kadir, and I will be leading today's session. We have some great speakers, and we're here not just to celebrate the spectacle of entertainment, but the sheer creativity that we bring to the global stage. We're here to dive into something truly spectacular, the world of entertainment in Saudi Arabia. This isn't just an event, it's a crossroads of culture, technology, and big dreams. Kind of like every intersection in Riyadh, just with less horns, I think. Over the next few days, you're going to have a chance to dive into a sea, sea, excuse the pun, of education. These sessions aren't just talks, they're backstage passes to the magic of entertainment and the magicians who conjure it up here across the kingdom. Let's not just wander past the myriad of booths without, uh, without a nod, some vendors out there with great, great products. Each booth is a treasure chest of this new entertainment kingdom that we are building. Bursting with innovations that are going to change the way we think, cheer, and have your audiences sit on the edge of their seats. As we gather at the dawn of this thrilling industry, let's channel our collective enthusiasm and propel Saudi into the limelight. It's an exciting time as we're not only joining the world's entertainment narrative, but adding a few chapters of our own. So thank you for bringing your, your energy, your passion, your insight, and your curiosity to the C Expo. Let's make some unforgettable connections, have a great week, craft a few stories of our own, and turn those dreams into dazzling realities. Welcome everyone to Saudi Arabia, welcome to Riyadh, and welcome to the Saudi Entertainment Expo. I hope you all have a great show. Our panels this week delve into innovative approaches, ponder over cultural considerations, storytelling, marketing, commercial strategies, training, safety, and so much more, all designed to place Saudi entertainment on the global map. As we navigate the complexities of attracting diverse audiences, let's recognize that we're here for success and success together. And as we fuel our excitement for the days ahead, it's time to shift our focus to the brilliant minds who are going to take us deeper into that realm of entertainment. So I'm thrilled to introduce our first keynote panel titled Saudi, Taking the Global Seat in the Entertainment World. This session promises to not only captivate, but deeply engage, discuss a global audience, how we can enhance the international allure of our entertainment offerings. So allow me to ask our esteemed speakers to join us on stage. Majid M. Alid, entertainment, side, entertainment Sector Director at the Ministry of Investment, and Damian Latham, Chief Attractions Officer at Seven. Please join me with a big round of applause. We're on and everybody could hear, so welcome, uh, welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for Should we move up? I feel, I feel like we're distant. Come closer. We're all friends. Oh. There we go. So I'm going to ask them to say, uh, say something about themselves in a second, but Majid has a diverse background and a passion for project development that's led him to achieve great success across multiple sectors. Over a decade of experience at Aramco, he's played a key role in developing projects worth over $70 billion. Majid, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, about what you're working on at the moment with the Ministry of Investment? Uh, thank you very much, Neil. 
So uh, currently, I'm the director of investment in the Ministry of Investment. It's within a sector called uh, tourism and quality of life. So as you are aware, entertainment is usually partnered with you know culture, tourism, even sport activities together. They all create this you know quality of life uh, culture that you you deal with. So what we do in the ministry, I mean, we focus on attracting the right investments when it comes to these sectors to the kingdom, partnering them. Uh, am I being heard? Is it working? Yeah. It's good. Oh, you can't hear me. Oh, they can't hear me. No. All right. Is this better? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so what we work on is actually attracting investments internationally that are related to these sectors. And obviously in the ministry, we have 22 other sectors that we'll, we deal with. We get the best in class um, investors to come into the market. We work on uh, connecting them with the right local partners in Saudi Arabia. We understand that this is a new market. We understand that some investors would love to have a local partner, especially to navigate uh, the cultural diversity, for an example. Uh, we also work with our ecosystem partners like the General Entertainment Authority in actually uh, developing and reforming the regulations when it comes to entertainment, tourism, sport, and culture. Um, I'm proud to say, you know, from 2016 until today, we've worked on more than 800 pro-business reforms. 60% of those are already implemented, and we're working on additional as well. So we're trying to make the investment ecosystem and the investment environment in Saudi Arabia and this uh, sector and any of the other sectors as seamless and as easy as possible for local and international investors. Perfect. Thank you, Majid. And Damien. Damien is the Chief Attractions Office at, uh, Officer at Seven, Saudi Entertainment Ventures. Brings over 30 years of expertise in development operation of leisure and retail attractions. And since joining in 2019, he has led more than 150 attractions that they're currently developing. Previously CEO of Imar Entertainment, managed Real Cinemas, Dubai Opera, Kidzania, Dubai Aquarium, and so much more. Damien, tell us what, uh, what's been achieved at Seven. Can you guys hear me? I can normally be heard, right? Uh, okay, uh, so yeah, I guess the last five years has been a bit of a journey, a uh, fantastic journey. Um, literally conceiving what an entertainment complex is was a key part of our mandate when I began at, at Saudi Entertainment Ventures. Um, we knew that it had to be different from a shopping mall. We knew that it had to be different from a theme park. We knew it was gonna be a new genre of entertainment overall. So there, there comes the really hard part, right? When you're creating something completely new to innovate and create, but also be sustainable as a business, uh, uh, mandates uh, are no mean feats, right? All of you in this room have been involved in, I'm sure, multifaceted attractions and uh, you know, had your uh, minds bended with uh, certain challenges. This one was a, was a huge challenge from the team. And I, I can only say that it's a testament to the team that we brought in uh, to get us to the stage that we're at now. So we have got 20 entertainment complexes across 21 destinations in the kingdom. As Neil alluded to, we've got 150 attractions and about 22 typologies of attractions. So everything from water parks right the way through to bowling centers and all the stuff in between, right? Um, We've signed up about six different international IPs along the way. So we've got great partnerships with Hasbro, Mattel, Formula E, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, Clip and Climb, uh, Flow House with Whitewater. So, you know, we've done some really, really strong deals that I think adds to the stickiness of the product that we're creating. And of course, all of that under the banner of sustainability. Our eye is on that 2030 vision. Our eye is, is, is not just to talk, but to build and to operate. So that's what we've been doing for the last five years. I'm exhausted just saying it. So great perspectives, and I think two great perspectives from, uh, from two great speakers on the stage. So let me start with asking you guys, what does the Saudi entertainment landscape look like now, and where is it heading? And let me start with Majid. Yeah, yeah, please allow me to start. So as you're all aware, you know, entertainment in Saudi is relatively new. Since the vision was announced in 2016, the entertainment boosted to a whole new level, and it's you know, going to uh, new targets by 2030. 
So what we've seen, I'll take you back to 2016, what we've seen with the establishment of the General Entertainment Authority, with the beginning of the entertainment activities we're starting to do in Saudi, for an example, the Riyadh season, we've seen that the government was fully leading and spending on making this entertainment happen. And I believe that was a showcase to show the international and local investors the demand on entertainment. I mean, the numbers speaks for themselves. We've seen a big interest when it comes to entertainment offering. Uh, tickets sold in full capacity. People are hungry for entertainment. And within the past few years, we've seen the shift. So now we announced the season through the General Entertainment Authority, and the investors are actually fighting to get a spot to participate in those events. So what we envision, you know, hopefully by 2030, or you know, in the few years coming, to have the entertainment sector led by private uh, investor, by private sector. Globally, 90% of the sector is led by private sectors, and 10% is usually government support, where they step in usually for big projects that you know private sectors can't handle, as I said, regulations, and other than that. When we talk about entertainment in Saudi Arabia in the coming years, we've established a very ambitious set of targets to reach for. Um, currently, Saudis spend around 3 to 4% of their income on entertainment. One of the targets is to increase that to 6% family spend. And I don't believe that number is exaggerated given that Saudis spend annually 11 billion US dollar, which is around 40 billion real on tourism and leisure abroad. So as you can see, there is a leakage when it comes to entertainment in Saudi that Saudis are actually compensating for by traveling abroad. Another, the entertainment sector is planned to be contributing to the Saudi GDP around 11 billion, dollar, uh, 11 billion real on an annual basis. And we're aiming to create 500,000 jobs. I'm sure a lot will come from you as well. <laughs> but um, all these targets um, are under you know, development. We're working toward them. And in the past five years, you can see a lot of achievements and a lot of records being broken when it comes to entertainment. I mean, we had more than 6,000 uh, licenses, business licenses, through General Entertainment Authority given to you know, investors. We had more than 4,000 events taking place across Saudi Arabia. And number of days of event, when you count them, are more than 26,000 days of event. Um, we had more than 80 million visitors to multiple entertainment events happening. So that shows you the demand. And that shows you the potential for entertainment in the few years. So hopefully in 10 years from now, you know, all these ambitious targets are actually happening. All the projects you're talking about will be in place. And hopefully Saudi will be a hub for entertainment, you know, for the region and globally, inshallah. Damien, where, where does that fit into you? What guy, how does that fit in for you guys? What sort of strategic approaches are you taking for, for Saudi and for an international scale? Yeah, th listen, I think, um, I think there's no doubt that there's already an entertainment sector here, right? It would be remiss to say, to sit here and say, okay, we're bringing entertainment. Saudi already has an established private, uh, sorry, uh, mainly private businesses, entertainment sector. And with, with the, you know, the, the PIF companies that are out there building all sorts of entertainment, we're encouraging private sector also to join hands with us as well. That's super important. And that's how you evolve a whole ecosystem that's sustainable. Um, I think beyond that, it also pushes each other to achieve more and to raise the bar. Because you don't just want to launch with, you know, with all the investment at your fingertips. You don't want to launch something that's going to be ordinary, right? Or, or mediocre, or just on a par with the rest of the region. No, 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 no. You know, this needs to blow the lid off of where the possibilities could be. Um, and I think that's, you, you know, that, that, that natural competition that will happen both internally uh, and externally will evoke a better and higher standard of entertainment, which is ultimately what our guests demand. Um, the, 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 the only piece that we need to remember is the continual investment piece, uh, because without that, then uh, you know, it's good for a few years and then it just dies away. So again, I'll come back to that word, business sustainability. And let me ask you both, it's moving at an incredible speed as, as we see you both talk about. How can Saudi maintain its cultural identity uh, and s still be appealing across, across a global audience? How does that balance work, Majid? Well, I think it's very important for Saudi to strike a balance between tradition and innovation. Um, Saudi is a very rich culture. They have a lot of different, you know, 
uh, heritage and story to tell. Um, and if you see the technology nowadays when it comes to entertainment, whether it is uh, VR, whether, whether it is uh, um, artificial intelligence, uh, immersive experiences, you can actually embed those cultural values and those uh, beliefs you know, that Saudi have into the entertainment aspect. I mean, we've seen a couple of examples globally when you go, uh, one of them is uh, the Notre Dame, for example, in Paris. I mean, they have this immersive experience that takes you back hundreds of years since it was built. Uh, once you put it on, you forget where you are, you forget what year you're in today, and you actually go to the, uh, to the era where they're actually building it on stones and trolleys. And I think Saudi have more stories to tell as well, you know, going back either from the Saudi story or even the Islamic culture as well given Saudi uh, unique position as the Islamic hub, having Mecca and Medina, the Prophet's story, all of those can be embedded in a cultural and entertainment storytelling uh, that brings international people and raise the curiosity of international audiences to experience that while still having fun and experiencing new technologies and new uh, projects as well. Jamie, does that work for you as well? It does, but I think, I think for us it's slightly, slightly different. So. Obviously, in designing these attractions, we've had to have the local culture, uh, the local history, which is so rich. Uh, we've had to embed that into our designs because, hey, we want to be relevant, right? If you want to be irrelevant, just port something in from somewhere else and throw it in. You, it's not going to be a, a business that works. So, you know, we've got some great examples. We've got a, an entertainment complex in Alassa that's right next to the uh, university, the art university. So, you know, the way we skew the design for that particular complex will be very much focused on local art and, and bringing art to life. So it's relevant to its destination. Its adjacency is that university. Uh, likewise in Abha, Abha's beautiful as a, as a location, the climate, very, very different, very diverse up in the mountains, got some really beautiful indigenous trees and plants. So, and the stone in, in the Asir region is, you know, a key part of the overall environment. So our complex, lo and behold, is, is represented through the local architecture, the local stone, the local uh, plant life and, and everything else. So again, we've, wherever possible, um, we've in injected it into our design process, which will ultimately lead to, you know, the kind of environments that our guests expect. Yeah. And then let's flip it on the other side. You guys are a brand new attraction. You've got the opportunity to open the doors and nobody, nobody's done it before. Nobody's done it this way before. So you get to start on a blank piece of paper. What does technology look like? I think that's what everybody's talking about these days. What does technology look like in the seven attractions? <laughs> yeah, um, I guess every single one of the attractions in their own right uh, has um, a unique technology piece. Um, certainly unifying our attractions on the guest journey through technology is at the forefront of our mind and beyond, you know, our, our, the, the, the wider landscape of attractions. I think, you know, you've always got to look outside of your own, your own area. Um, but individually in the attractions, uh, it's got to be the latest and greatest. And there's some attractions where we've decided to take, frankly, a, uh, an innovation-led approach, which means sometimes it will fail, right? And if you want to be out there on the bleeding edge of technology, you've got to be prepared for some investment and for, you know, some failure. And thankfully, we have a, you know, a fantastic board, an extremely supportive board, who understand that innovation is at the heart and soul of our attractions. And uh, as such, uh, we believe what we're going to be launching, uh, well, it's not what we believe, it's, it's what our guests think. Our guests, I think, will have no doubt in, uh, in, in holding some of our attractions up as, as being on that bleeding edge. Imagine at a ministry level, is that a, that a focus for you as well? Definitely. I mean, in addition to what um, Damien just said here, Technology has always been a bridge, you know, to bring societies together, geographical location, culture together. Uh, we believe, you know, with all the activities, with all the events we're doing in Saudi, I mean, both in, when we speak of entertainment here, we focus on two main pillars. We focus on destination development, which is, you know, the theme parks, the family entertainment centers and all of that. But we also have another pillar to focus on, which is the live events, 
the pop-ups, the, the music festival and all of that. And, you know, with what we've been doing in the past few years, we've seen a big demand taking place. One of the biggest examples is Middle Beast. I mean, you know, the past few years, we have a lot of international audiences coming to attend these attractions. I believe, you know, with the utilization of technology, uh, you could have these events taking place in Saudi, but also exporting them to every area worldwide. So we would love for people to come visit Saudi, travel to the different beautiful areas, as here for an example, and all of that. But by utilizing technology, you could export the Saudi culture, the Saudi events, the Saudi attractions to different global, through different you know, um, technology uh, means that we have, to have the same event taking place in Saudi and abroad as well. And I think both of you guys touched on this a little bit already, but let's delve a little bit deeper. Let's talk about international partnerships. How are those critical? How, how are you aligning with them in, in your areas? Is it something that you need to align with and is it important? Definitely. I mean, we understand, you know, again, uh, inter the, the international market has been there for a while, you know, in entertainment. We know that there could be a great collaboration with the international market. I think uh, there are three main pillars I'll focus on when we talk about international collaboration. So one is, you know, the, the leading companies, you know, the, the entertainment uh, companies that have been around for a while would like to expand to a new market, to, would like to expand to a new region. Saudi is the hub of the Middle East with the population they have, with the vision targets we're planning to do. So it will be a great uh, location to have a partnership, uh, international partnership to come to Saudi Arabia. Second is international companies who are interested to, uh, to partner with local uh, investors. We have a lot of appetite in the market, uh, liquidity and interest to develop the local market. And we understand that some of these local uh, investors would love to partner with a leading international or a startup international company to actually uh, use their knowledge and expanding the market as well. And finally, I give a special attention as well to startups when it comes to also to the entertainment uh, sector as well. We would love to foster these startups to come into Saudi Arabia, start developing their businesses. There is a lot of incentives that we could talk about later uh, where we provide them with their office spaces, with you know the connections they need, the central services as well in order for them to grow. And our ambitions is not just to see them operational in Saudi Arabia. We want these companies to grow, to expand in the Saudi market, regionally and hopefully internationally as well. So again, our vision for the Saudi entertainment is to grow in Saudi, but also start expanding to uh, international countries as well. Yeah, I think on the, on the topic of IPs, I've already mentioned some of the IPs we've signed with, but I think there's another P, right? There's intellectual property, and the other P is partnerships, and partnerships being the focus. Um, it would be easy if, uh, and unsustainable, <laughs> if we were to just throw money at an IP, right, and invite them into the kingdom, and, you know, it not be a sustainable. But by having a proper partnership, a meaningful partnership that's going over decades, that you've signed a contract that works, that's globally recognizable and robust from both, for both partners has been our focus. And um, uh, in essence, then you, you understand, whoa, hang on here. That's actually serious, you know? That's a serious piece of work. It's a serious investment with each other for the future, not for a two-year, three-year, five-year, uh, you know, uh, flash in the pan. This is, this is decades in the making. And that's encouraging, I believe, companies to want to come and invest in Saudi Arabia uh, you know, and come and be in Saudi Arabia, frankly speaking. Um, and yeah, that's testament to, I think, all the hard work that's going on around all the different entities uh, that have been encouraged to you know, focus on 2030. This is great and great insights. Um let me flip it around a little bit. What are the challenges? What's difficult? What keeps you guys awake at night? Well, there are a few, to be honest. Um, you know, top that come to my mind right now, for example, is um, you have cultural sensitivities. You need to understand the culture very well to represent it in a very good manner. You have language barriers. And also you have uh, sensitivities and taboos in every culture. So when you develop your entertainment offering, you develop your live show, and especially you're trying to um, export that, not just to local market, to internationally, you have to make sure that you are not unintentionally um, you know, offending a special group or a special uh, segment of any culture. 
And to avoid all of this, there are different, uh, I'll call it strategies we're doing with our stakeholders in the government. We have cultural exchange programs. We're sending local artists uh, to uh, partner with international artists, you know, globally. And vice versa, when we have international artists coming into Saudi Arabia, we try to connect them to local artists because the local artists will understand the values and believe of the culture. Um, also, uh, other than that, we have uh, local talent uh, empowerment. So we work with the local talent, we work with the local artists to actually make sure they understand, you know, how to represent themselves when it comes to entertainment offerings, you know, globally and internationally. Uh, one success story when it comes to local artists going internationally is the Saudi Orchestra in New York. I mean, that took the world by surprise. I mean, it was beautiful, it was all over the internet, and they made us proud. And it was a full Saudi team, you know, going on international standard in front of world's leader and then internationally. So all of these are actually being addressed by extensive research, by extensive studies between, you know, Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Investment, General Entertainment Authority, and local content as well to make sure that everything presented is acceptable to all age group, all ethnicities, and all uh, audiences as well. Not much keeps me up at night. Not much. I think um, investing wisely uh, is, is something that we have a responsibility for, and that, that responsibility weighs heavy. Um, but then execution for operations is something that's becoming more and more closer for us. So getting the right guest experience and ensuring that we blow the lid off the expectations for our guests, that, that also will start to bear a you know, bear some weight. But other than that, I sleep very well. The neighbor has really bad music that he puts up sometimes, it's loud. <laughs> other than that, it's great. Good, not just me then. Um, let's flip it around. We talked about international partnerships and we talked about what can you take from outside? What can the rest of the world take from Saudi? What are the learnings? It's a new market. What are we doing that's different? I, I, I'll, I'll jump in here. We're, we're creating homegrown IP. Uh, for that for that reason, right? I think that people will be hungry once they see it. We're investing more time in homegrown IP, clearly, because Seven is very much a, uh, a Saudi-focused company. Um, so as a consequence, I think that will, that you, you know, people will have an appetite externally to see that uh, in other countries. So I think that's, that's the secret sauce that we're developing. It's not all about external IPs. Those relationships are super important. Um, but yeah, it's that, it's that local intellectual property that we're building. And also, I mean, I'd like to add to Damien here, um, I believe, you know, with the Saudi ambitions and all the, you know, technologies we're doing, I think Saudi is setting up a new benchmark when it comes to entertainment. With, uh, with the amazing, um, you know, projects that we're talking about, Damien mentioned that in the beginning as well, when we come to do the technologies, we're thinking 20 years ahead. We're trying to get the latest technologies. We're trying to get the best innovations. So I think we're putting a positive uh, challenge into the international community as well and the global entertainment sector to actually elevate the offering as well to be in line with the Saudi uh, entertainment sector going forward. Okay, and uh, last question before we jump to a couple of minutes Q&A from the audience. We talked about where we are now. We talked about where, what's developing. We talked about where it's heading. But 10 years, what does that picture look like? 30 million attendants, uh, I won't say the number, but <laughs> some healthy, healthy financials, um, 25,000 people employed in, in the seven business alone, uh, I could go on, you know, um, we're coming out of the, literally coming out of the ground and uh, we have general contractors on site in multiple locations across, uh, across the kingdom, this is reality, right, the planning is over. The, the building is now, and the operations is next year. So it's, it's time to go. Awesome. Thank you. The same here. I mean, I totally agree with you, Damien. Um, I really hope, you know, one of the targets for 2030 is to have 150 million visitors on an annual basis. I mean, this number was 100 million a few years ago, but given, you know, the, the accomplishments that are taking place and we've, we're seeing stuff happening on the ground, we believe the number... Uh, could be expanded and it's been raised to 150 million visits. Out of those 100 million vi 150 million visits, we want to see many of those are coming to experience our attractions, seven attractions and new projects happening. Um, I envision in the next 10 years Saudi to be hub 
for all kinds of entertainment offerings, whether it is uh, destinations and theme parks, whether it is live events. People will actually uh, mark their calendar to attend one or two or three different uh, festivals, three different events in Saudi when it comes to entertainment. I believe by 10 years from now, Saudi will be uh, beyond uh, exporting their you know, culture, values, and all of that internationally through their entertainment projects and entertainment conference. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, great insight. Let me open it to the audience. Do we have a, a mic for uh, questions? Any questions that you would like to ask Damien or Majid? Anybody? Nobody from Seven can ask me a question. <laughs> no questions. Well, I guess we did a good job then. Oh, one here. The microphone's on its way to we'll, we'll get you a mic because I can't hear you. Hi, Damien. A uh, question for you. Now that you've started opening some of your projects, what's the early feedback in terms of the financials? Are you actually hitting your numbers? I know you can't reveal them. We, we, we've not opened, just to clarify, we've not opened any complexes as yet. We're due to open next year. Next year. Um, uh, a multitude, actually, of, uh, of, of complexes. We, we have um, 12 cinemas uh, as part of our... Um, our cinema group at the moment uh, with AMC, our partnership with AMC. So, uh, you know, the cinema business globally is, is definitely under, still under stress as a result of COVID and content. Um, and, you know, we're in no different position to any other uh, cinema company. So, you know, we're growing our business within our, um, uh, within our complexes. We believe in the, uh, in the cinema industry and the movie industry as a whole. And, uh, Certainly, we've taken a lot of cues from that business into our attractions as well. So, no complex open right now, today. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Majid, uh, first of all, thank you for the panel, the three of you. Um, Majid, out of the 100 million tourists you, you have at the moment, how, mo how many are... Um, religiously here in the country and how many are actual entertainment or leisure tourists at the moment and how does that number change when you say 150 million so the 150 million is the target for 2030 vision so we're expecting 150 million visits by 2030 uh, religious tourism we're expecting 30 to 40 million between Hajj and Umrah I think that's reasonable but you know given the projects we're doing in Saudi when it comes to tourism culture entertainment all of that I mean, usually when people, and especially international pilgrimage, they come into Saudi for, you know, the religious tourism, they usually spend, you know, a week traveling to the region or different cities to, you know, exp explore the, uh, the, the, the region, the different cultures and what have you. Given the various pipeline that we have when it comes to quality of life uh, projects, tourism, culture, entertainment and sport, we expect to capture a lot of those 30 to 40 million visits to actually travel to the different region of Saudi Arabia. Especially that we're working on a very strong and robust uh, logistic network. We have around uh, 20 airports in Saudi, 14 of which are international, and they are growing as well. The different railway plans to connect different cities with rail. So it will be very easy for those religious tours or religious visits to go and attend the different entertainment facilities we have and tourism in Saudi Arabia as well. I, th I think, Marcus, it's about putting in that infrastructure, right? And there's no denying that all around us that infrastructure is building at all sorts of different rates. But to try and build an entire infrastructure in such a short space of time is such a, such a bold ambition. And it's happening. So you can't deny that, you know, that the follow through is, is exciting and the follow through is happening. If you look at Orlando and the numbers in Orlando, I think they hit 75 million last year in terms of attendance. Um, but 90% of it was from the US and North America. So only 10% was external, believe it or not, into Orlando. So it's not just about attracting global, it's about having some amazing attractions right here in the kingdom as well, and having local tourism be a massive key. This country is huge, huge. There's so much to explore. So yeah, it's about having those tools. Awesome, thank you. I think we have time for just one more question. If uh... No, then you answered perfectly. 
Oh, one at the back over here. Do we have a mic? I can't see. Sorry, I've got lights in my eyes. <laughs> what are the plans in terms of developing a workforce for the facilities and the challenges you face in terms of building out a workforce? And how do you plan to overcome those challenges? It's, it's huge. The challenge is big, for sure. Um, you know, you start at grassroots level, universities, engagement with universities, explaining and demonstrating the a wonderful career that can be had in the entertainment sector. Um, there's many senior Saudi leaders in the entertainment sector already, but showcasing those into local universities is certainly on our agenda uh, to do. Creating academies, partnerships with existing academies. I mean, you name it, every single one of those, it's a, it's a topic of conversation and a strategy that, that is currently uh, being talked about and being executed as we speak. So, yeah, if we talk about things that keep you up, of course, you know, getting a, getting, getting a whole country's youth engaged with a sector that isn't necessarily something that's naturally, but even, even in the West, right, it's not a natural sector to go into. Generally speaking, you only go into it um, if you're either crazy or me, uh, or it's a summer job, and then you fall into it, and then it becomes something, and then it, you get hooked into it, right? So I think, it's, I think it's about demonstrating to people and showing people there are real career paths to be had, and um, it's, a, it's an option that should be considered, and a fun option that can be, be considered, yeah? Um, from our side, I mean, we understand the demand coming in. I mean, when you look at seven projects, when you look at the Gidea, when you look at the private sector and international partnerships coming in, there is a big demand when it comes to workforce in Saudi Arabia. So we're focusing right now on attracting, you know, some of the leading uh, entertainment academies. You know, there is, I mean, uh, there is a lot to, to, to learn to be able, you know, to operate these parks, to be part of this ecosystem in the future. The entertainment is not a small sector. It's actually one of the most growing sector in the kingdom. It's even growing faster than the GDP of the, of the country. So there is a lot that we need to do. We're working on developing the academies, um, entertainment, tourism, and hospitality in general. Uh, we know the demand will be here in 2030, and we're trying to build the infrastructure beforehand to cater for that when the time comes. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, I think that is us out of time. So let me finish by saying a huge thank you for a great session, and what a great way to kick off the Saudi Entertainment Expo. Thank you to Damien and to Majid.